everyone and welcome to our exercise summary. So now we've covered most of the principles around exercise. So this uh, session is just to consolidate that advice, just to put it all together. Now, in reality, there's no best way to do this. All the strategies are as valid as each other. And really it's about finding your swing with it. So finding the best method that works for you. So we're kind of giving you the tools in the toolbox to allow you to go away and use those tools to help you build the best management strategy for your diabetes care around exercise. But just to recap then, so we have our different types of exercise. So you have cardio and high intensity. Both have different effects on the uh, glucose levels. Cardio will be a gradual decline in your glucose levels, whereas that high intensity training type exercise can cause a spike at first, and then it can gradually drop off. Of course, there will be times when you do things like sport, where actually it might be high intensity, but you still might just see a drop off in your glucose levels. And if that's a repeatable behavior, then you know for you in that particular activity, that's the pattern that you need to be assessing and that's the pattern you need to be treating. Um, sometimes it can be variable though, which does make it more difficult and therefore you only have to do your best or you can only do your best with your management strategies. We've also discussed various different methods that we can use. So carb loading or eating carbohydrates both throughout and after exercise can be an effective tool to help manage your diabetes level, uh, your glucose level, sorry. Now this is probably the easiest method, truth be told, aiming somewhere between 20 to 60 grams of carbohydrate per hour, particularly if you're doing longer endurance events, or if you wanna keep it more simple and you're just at the gym or you're going for a walk, it might be that you just need 15 or 20 grams of carbohydrate just to help prop you up or take it before the session to help um, increase the glucose levels that are slightly on the lower end of the scale just to prop them up before you start exercising. Um, and the same thing once you finish, just a small snack to help just tide you over until you can get home and have a meal. So that's probably the easiest way, although I do appreciate a lot of people exercise to help them lose weight. And obviously every time you eat, you're taking on additional calories, but 15 to 20 grams of carbohydrate isn't a huge amount. Even 60 grams, uh, it will come with calories, don't get me wrong, and it could undo some uh, exercise sessions, in which case perhaps then looking at the insulin reductions might be a better method for you. Um, but it might be that you use a combination of both, which you can see is our final point here. You can also do basal reductions, probably more for our pump users because they have more flexibility with their pump. So you can reduce between 20 and 80% as a temp basal reduction. But of course, just think and remember that that is for a short duration, maybe two hours, and then they'll ramp it back up to their normal rate or even an increased rate if their glucose levels have climbed too high and they've overshot the reduction. People that are taking insulin injections, if you are gonna reduce the basal rate, by no means should you be going to the same reductions as a pump user, perhaps maybe five, 10% tops to start with until you establish your patterns. If you reduced by 50 to 80% like a pump user would, you're really gonna throw out your diabetes and that's gonna be very dangerous. Because um, remember, like I say, a pump user will only reduce for two hours. If you reduce your background insulin injection, that's a, say an 80% reduction for 24 hours. That's a big drop and we don't recommend that. Therefore, actually managing the rapid insulin will probably be the better strategy if you're taking insulin injections. Pump users might still need to reduce their, ins their rapid insulin injections later on in the day or even before exercise. Um, but like I say, they do have that added benefit of the flexibility of the pump. Whereas someone with subcutaneous injections, this is probably gonna be their bread and butter. So it depends when you're taking your injection in relation to the exercise session. If you're not working with insulin or additional insulin on board, then you've got the least amount of variables to deal with and therefore that's the easiest time to actually exercise. If you are exercising within the action of your rapid insulin, you might need to do a reduction. Again, somewhere between 20 and up to 100%, depending on the duration, the intensity, the time. Um, and that's gonna weigh in to how you need to manage your glucose levels going forward. I guess the other thing to mention about insulin management is how repeatable the behavior is. If you're exercising every day, then your basal requirement is just gonna be standard, particularly if you're taking subcut injections because you'll be burning up that glucose every day and therefore your basal um, requirement will be what it is every day. It's when you get more variable with your exercise session and more sporadic, maybe one on, one off, 
or maybe two days at the gym and then you take a day off, that's when you're gonna need more insulin on some days and less insulin on others because as you exercise, not only are you burning up glucose, but you also become more sensitive to your insulin. So your insulin works better. So that's when you need to get uh, specific exercise rules um, and rest day rules in place, and that will help you. So I'd encourage you to write that down. And just to really sum up, in reality, most people use a combination. They will fuel their exercise with some additional glucose, particularly in times of need. So they'll see their drop-in during the session, so they'll just take something on board, a couple of ta uh, glucose tablets or a glucogel, um, or any form of gel for that matter with glucose in it. Uh, they might have a sports drink, and then they'll also reduce their rapid insulin. Pump users will reduce their basal insulin, may also reduce their rapid insulin, particularly at later um, time points when they're at later meals in the day after the exercise, perhaps before as well, and might even take on some additional carbohydrates. So like I say, really it is just pattern recognition and applying uh, these management strategies to your specific patterns. And if you do that soon enough, you'll be able to manage it quite effectively.